This is the GK2 resin printer from Uniformation. It is a 10.3 inch 8K 3D printer. It is able to print down to 29.6 microns and in this video I'm going to show you how I turn this from an 8K printer into a 12K printer. But before I can do that, let's first empty out the machine and have a look at what the resolution looks like at 8K and then when I do change it over to 12K, we can look at the prints and uh, make up a decision for ourselves uh, based on what we see. As I have already said in the beginning of this video, this is a 10.3 inch 8K resin printer. Some of the features of this printer are things like a pop-up cover, as well as a quick release for the build plate, built-in heating, this is the most important feature, and uh, there is an odor removal filter, which I am not 100% sure removes the odor, but it definitely does extract a lot of air from this machine. There is a removable carbon filter for the back of this machine which you can buy a spare parts for as well. Uniformation very kindly sent me a 12k kit with my new machine and they did in fact ask me if I would make a video uh, showing off the new 12k kit on the machine and so we're going to go over uh, their claims of how easy it is to change the screen on this machine. First off, let's talk about what is in this 12K kit. The first thing that you're going to see when you open up the kit is the cable. Uh, this is a ribbon cable. Be extremely careful with this. Uh, the next thing that you're going to see in this kit is the screen, obviously. And you're also going to get a UV light meter underneath that screen as well. And uh, you're definitely going to need to probably look at the instructions uh, for how to change it. because only because there is a lot of screws that need to be unscrewed and you might forget where they go by the end of this uh, procedure. Now, while it is still fresh in my mind, I would like to uh, make a suggestion to you. If you do have this machine and you are planning on upgrading to the 12K uh, screen, then I would suggest you do the firmware update before you do any of this. Only because I didn't do this at first and I thought to myself I would do it and then I forgot to do it and uh, you have to do it. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time and we will see this later on. Of course, there are a lot of screws to open this up. This isn't just... Uh, completely just a screen change the cable that attaches to the 12k screen has a slightly bigger end to it and this means that you need to get inside and unplug that cable from the board inside of the machine which means you're going to need to take out a whole load of screws gonna lie to you and say to you that this was a super simple task it's not difficult but it isn't something that you're gonna do in five minutes you definitely need to allow yourself a good hour or two to do this task uh, because there is a lot of screws to take off because you are completely opening up this machine and once you open up this machine honestly this build is incredible I am someone who likes to build remote control things and electronic things and I can honestly appreciate the way they've set up this machine and how well and neatly and tidily everything has been placed inside of it honestly I really like the way they've set up things inside of this machine 
Now, once you are all the way through to the end of taking all the screws out and you've opened up the entire machine, you need to get that main screen out and it's time to open up the front cover so you can actually get access to the ribbon cable on the inside and it makes it easier for you to thread the new ribbon cable back in again. It's at this point that in the video that Uniformation gives you, their front cover comes off so much easier than mine. Because of the tidiness and the way they've cleaned up all the cables inside of this machine, my front cover didn't come out as far and I'm not gonna lie, wiggling this cable through was quite difficult. Be extremely patient and careful with this kind of cable. If you tear this cable, it is game over and you need to get a new one. So please, uh, use my advice when I say to you, you don't want to ruin this cable. Once you've got the cables plugged in, however, it is super smooth sailing and it takes probably half the amount of time to put the machine back together again because you've already taken these screws out and you know exactly where they go now. But don't get over excited just yet because you don't want to screw up the entire machine uh, together because you have one more task to do before you can actually put all the screws back in and that is going to be plugging back in the machine and testing your screen uh, that you have the right or the correct intensity of UV coming through your new 12K screen. And if you don't, uh, that probably is because you haven't done the firmware update and this is why you can see my UV tool is not uh, giving me the uh, instructions that I was expecting uh, I had nothing zero came through no light came through I panicked I thought I'd done something wrong and I, did, I didn't all I did was I needed to do the firmware update and once I had done the firmware update I could do the test again and uh, it was it was all because it, I was an idiot. I should not have forgot to do that firmware update. By the way, if you do do the firmware update and you find out that your machine is now in a language that you may not understand, then just follow these instructions on the screen. It's only a couple of clicks and you can change it back to English or whatever language you would like to uh, read your information in. The easiest way for you to check this UV is at the right intensity is just to run a simple vat cleaning uh, maneuver inside of the machine. This will run the lights and you can then see what numbers you are getting. You need to get it between 3.5 and 4.5 on that little dial that you have that is attached to the UV thing and you need to go in the back of the machine and adjust the potentiometer. I found adjusting it by absolutely tiny increments made a huge difference. I ended up settling somewhere around just about 4 because I felt like that was right in between and it probably, I don't know, I felt like being in between was better than being one or the other. That's just what I did. And once you are satisfied that you are getting the correct UV readings, then it's time to put this machine all the way back together again. There is about 1,487,000 screws that need to be screwed back in, but don't fear. Just uh, make yourself a cup of tea or coffee and uh, just start screwing them screws, boy. And once you've got it back together again, it's always a best practice when you do a screen change or anything like this to just re-level your machine again. And now Uniformation has this uh, unique way. I don't know if it's unique actually. It's just a way that I haven't seen before. And uh, basically all you do is you put a piece of paper with a couple of pieces of paper in the corners and then you drop the screen down on it and then you set it so that those pieces of paper in the corners uh, feel nice and tight and then you're good to go.
I put my piece of paper away somewhere safe for another time that I need to use it and then I put in a Emeritabs lounge to test uh, to find out if my exposure was truly right and what my numbers are and once I had got that I then ran a whole load of prints and uh, I'm going to show you the results uh, right now. So in conclusion, what do I think about the upgrade uh, 12k screen? I don't really know to be honest because the 8k version was so good as it is I'm not really sure that it needed to be upgraded in the first place I was made aware however by another youtuber by the name of Fohammer that you actually get a slightly smaller amount of screen on the 12k versus the 8k I'm just gonna keep all my screens and when one of them dies I'll have a backup and they'll both be just as good as each other so uh, my conclusion to this is that Uniformation 8k resin printer out the box is amazing as it is and I don't even think that they needed an upgrade in the first place but if you're the kind of person who likes to upgrade things then this is a super simple easy upgrade uh, that you can probably do uh, for yourself Now, I must just mention that Uniformation has sent me this machine. Uh, not only did they send me this one, but they asked to work with me again, and instead of any payments, I asked for another machine, just because of how much I like this machine. I said the word machine a lot, and uh, that's because it's a great machine. And I really, really, really do think if you're looking for a machine and you want to get something to 3D print and resin in the mid sort of scale size printers, this is one of the ones to definitely be looking at. It is a serious contender amongst all the others. <clears throat> Also, since Uniformation did send it to me, they asked me if I would mention in the video that their Black Friday specials are going to be running at the time of this video uh, being live. So if you are wanting to buy one of these machines, now is the cheapest you're going to get it for the next year at least. So look in the description for any links for uh, this machine. Also in the future, if you're watching this video, and uh, Black Friday is over, then the code for the Black Friday won't work. But you can use code GROUND for an extra $80 off of your purchase. I would like to say super special thank you to my Patreons, because without them, these lights wouldn't blind my eyeballs and Uniformation wouldn't send me fantastic machines. And we are now at the part of the video where I need to tell you if you didn't like what you saw, it's tough. You should have left earlier, and now is probably the time that you can uh, f off. Now let's see how much UV light comes out of the sun. <laughs> 